Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to start in just a second. All right, I think we can go ahead and get started now. Want to move to the next slide, please, Bill? All right, welcome everyone to our in-person support program slash full day. We're opening school town hall. Um, first, I want to say that we will be recording this event and I think we are recording. Yes, so if anybody misses this, we'll be able to share it out tomorrow in the Dolphin Dispatch. Um, I also wanted to um, let you know that in the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A um, button. So if you push that, then you will be able to ask questions throughout the presentation. We will answer some of them if they're easy as we go, and we will save time at the end for a live Q&A using that channel. So please populate that with your questions. Um, first, before I start, I'd like to introduce myself and the, let the rest of the team introduce them. My name is Audrey Menard. I'm the school director, and it's a pleasure to be with you again today. Next, we have, why don't we go alphabetically? Just introduce yourself, go. Good afternoon. My name is Alida Garcia Perez. I'm the PK principal. Nice for all of you to be here. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Munson. I'm the high school principal. And it is uh, exciting to be able to open up a little bit more as we, even though we close out the year, we get a little closer to returning to normal. Hi, everyone. I'm Kyle Martin. I'm the middle school principal, and I could not agree more. Having kids on campus for an entire day is an exciting prospect. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to, to have you here today. I'm looking forward to sharing with you uh, an exciting path to having the students here a full day. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I'm Joyce Meininger, the principal at the elementary school, and I think we need to work with, with our Kyle about his alphabetical um, JK. <laughs> uh, and uh, oh, anyway, we're thrilled you're here. So I got distracted by that. We're thrilled you're um, visiting with us today. We are very excited, as Eric said, to be able to end our year in this capacity this year. Hi, everyone. Matthew McInnes. I'm the Director of Athletics and Activities, and I've been heavily involved with the Safeguarding Committee this year as well. So I look forward to sharing more with you as we go on today. And the, the unsung hero behind the cameras today that's running all this for us is our wonderful Bill Hatcher. So thank you, Bill. So we are, first we want to give you a little, um, a little information about how well our in-person support program has gone. You know, we really appreciate how everyone's taken our pledge very seriously, both the faculty and staff, as well as the families. And we are so happy to say we've not had a single um, case of COVID transmitted on campus. Our Swiss cheese model is working. And now as of today, all of our teachers um, are fully vaccinated and most of our staff will be fully vaccinated in, in the next few weeks. So we're really excited to, to note that. Next page, please. We, um, we started, this is just sort of a, a timeline. You know, we were the first school to get out of the gate, getting students back on program. And we found sort of the, the tutorial approach. So we used that to be able to kick our school back off on March the 8th. And then on March the 14th, more families joined as they heard about how the beginning was starting off well. Then Maduka officially named us a safe school on April 28th. And what that means is that we're now officially allowed to open school and not have the in-person support program effective May 31st. Um, the, like I already mentioned, our faculty is as of today fully vaccinated. And um, May 31st, we will be extending our hours 
since that is the first day we're allowed to have school and we will begin to include Fridays. We have um, maintained our digital backbone throughout and our students um, have been included. No one has been left out in this process. So we're, we're really pleased about this. Next page, please. Now, <clears throat> what will it look like beginning May 31st? Each of the principals are gonna talk specifically about it, will, what it will look like in their campus. But at a high level, every day, we, Monday through Thursday, we will be open from 8 a.m. And then we will dismiss pre-K pre three and pre-K four at 12.30. And then we'll dismiss all the other students at 2.15. Now, Fridays, we still have our professional development in the afternoon, so there's only, two Fridays left. So June 4th, we'll have the first half of the alphabet on that day. Friday, June 11th, we'll have L through Z on campus that day. And the rest is just the same. It's just a longer day. A to K on Mondays and Wednesdays and L to Z on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Next, please. The one really important thing is for you to know that you have to sign up. So those families that are already enrolled and are already coming to school every day, they don't, you don't have to do anything differently. But those that wanna join in that haven't been involved in coming to campus, you do need to enroll in this because we have to organize classes and, and just figure a lot of logistics out. So please sign a copy of the pledge by email before midnight on Tuesday the 25th to your child's um, administrative assistant. And you can see them here on the screen. And by doing that, then we can find, uh, we can work things so that they're able to attend. So we just we just need to know. Of course, for all families that do not wanna to come to school, you, it's, you we're still teaching the same way, you'll still get the same education. And so none of that part has changed. Next slide, please. And now I'm gonna kick it over to Janet. Thanks, Audrey, much appreciated. And good afternoon, everyone. As we are looking to extend the hours, we've had the challenge to find solutions for lunch and the team has gotten together and we have set up spaces for lunch. As you know, our cafeteria is currently under construction. We are in track to open in August with a brand new cafeteria with all safety and biosecurity measures in place. For starting May 31st with our extended uh, schedule, our ES students will continue to eat in the spaces they're currently using for their AM snack with uh, social distancing, uh, airflow, and biosecurity protocols. For middle school and high school, what we've set up is in our tennis courts, uh, which have enough space and ventilation for them to remove the mask. We are gonna set up cafeteria tables with indication of how many can feed per area. And middle school have their lunch at 11.30 and then we will clean between shifts and high school have their lunch at 12.30. Please keep in mind that given the situation and, and the biosecurity measures, we will have no cutlery available or cups or microwaves at the stations. So please bring everything from home. Also, because we're gonna have lunch and the hours are gonna be extended, please keep in mind to bring extra masks uh, for uh, your children to, to be able to change masks throughout the day to a clean one. And then of course, our refillable water bottles, which is for safety as well as part of our sustainability and care for the environment. We have installed across campus uh, non-contact water fountains so they can go ahead and easily fill out their bottles. Thank you. Bill, if I may have the next one. And with regards to transportation. So we will continue to clean our buses on a daily basis and nebulize them on our school lot. And the, we've been in contact with our transportation companies, the recommended transportation companies we use for uh, the new schedule. So our PK3 and PK4 students will leave at 1230, Monday through Thursday. And then we will have for the dismissal at 1215, the remaining grades will be able to uh, get on their transportation on their bus home. For Fridays, everyone will be dismissed at 1130 and this will include all grades as well. Now we will continue our biosecurity protocols and measures with temperature checking before boarding, as well as the required use of face masks and recently face shields. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll pass it over to Alida. Thank you.
Hello. So, uh, again, we have to continue with our uh, Meduca non negotiables. We need to keep um, a distance of 1.5 to 2 meters at all the times. Uh, as Janet was uh, already sharing, we have to check our, uh, the temperature on arrival. Um, we have our separate nurse area for suspected areas and uh, the mandatory use of masks continues to be part of our biosecurity measures. Next. You're, you've seen this many times, the Swiss cheese model. Um, and I just want to re-emphasize that we need to make sure that we continue to follow these, that we do follow MINSA and Meduca guidelines. And we ask you to just keep reinforcing these messaging with your, your children who are coming to campus. Um, just a personal observation, I would say the younger students are the best at complying with this, especially the distancing. Um, and the older ones, including us, the adults, are the ones that meet, need the most reminding. And we struggle at times with the distancing. So, so please just help as we approach the end of the year and people become comfortable um, on campus to reinforce these messaging. It's, it's the correct use of masks. It's keeping distanced. Um, we're taking care of occupancy um, and the, the principals have done a great job of handling that um, with the complexities of moving between classrooms. Um, hand washing has been, has been great and the kids are really doing a good job with complying with everything. And then the cleaning and disinfecting, our operations team are doing a, a fantastic job. And our kids have been great as well of disinfecting their spaces in the secondary school before they move on to their next class. So we're really doing a great job here. And we need to just, just keep that going. That's the message. Let's not become complacent and let's keep following all of these, these procedures. Uh, Bill, if you could jump to the next slide. This is a, a little overview um, of positive cases. And so what you'll see when you look at the staff, if you look at that as a column, we have had five cases since March 8 and all five have recovered. We have had eight different student cases of which six have recovered and two are still active. Now, many of these um, cases came during spring break or during the circuit breaker, uh, directly after spring break. So you didn't necessarily receive a communication about all of these, um, given that we didn't need to quarantine anyone while we were on spring break and uh, during the circuit breaker after that. But the key point here is that fifth bubble over to your, your left on the side, we have had zero evidence of any on-campus transmission. So we've been able to um, trace where the cases have come from and uh, there hasn't been any transmission on campus yet. So we have been very careful and in sending any close contacts home and none of those cl close contacts have tested positive afterwards. So we've been really, um, fortunate and we've been uh, getting some confidence with all of our measures that are working and we have had success with reducing um, transmission on campus and that's not down to just the school that's down to parents that's down to students because it's all of us and how we've been behaving not just on campus but also off campus um, you're now going to hear a little bit from each of the principals specifically related to the different divisions so i'm going to pass you back over to Miss Alida, who's going to talk about pre-K three and pre-K four. Exactly. So we are extending our program of an hour. We are hoping to give more time for the kids to have cell activities. So we have included um, a little longer special class. We have also included an extra period of outdoor and choice time. And you can see, this is just a sample schedule of what will happen in school and virtually. And again, as, as it's just an extension of what we're doing. And many times um, both groups are interacting. On Fridays, as, as mentioned uh, before, we will go home at 11.30. And um, so it's just regular, days like we are doing right now. Um, we, were, we did a long uh, study of keep it, because PK in the uh, past always say until 240. And so we thought and um, observed our students and read 
different articles about uh, the different advantages of you know either keeping them until two fifteen or sending them at twelve uh, thirty. At the end, we decided to send them at twelve thirty because mainly because of the masks. Um, we have read many articles that the extended use of masks for children under six is not recommended. Um, we have also observed that adapting to new routines have been hard for our three and four year olds. They're tired at the end of the day and they will have to have lunch and nap time at our school. And again, with a mask and the use of the mask gets very tiresome for them by the end of the day. Um, and it's a non-negotiable, as I mentioned before, for Meduca. So our kids will have to stay with a mask for the entire day. And that's the main reason why we decided that it's best for them to go home, have a healthy lunch at home, and then join us for Spanish at the end of the day. Thank you. And now Joyce will talk about her program. I will, I've got to get this question box down. Hello, everybody. Um, so we are so excited about this and, and the opportunity it presents for our students at the end of the school year. <laughs> Unlike secondary who just extended sometimes, we have had quite the scheduling conundrum that we have tackled and we are excited about what kids um, are going to be able to be offered. So we've broken that up afternoon into four blocks you'll see there. Um, most students on all days will have 20 minutes of lunch and 20 minutes of an additional recess between 11.30 and 12.10. In order to get a live uh, Spanish class every day, we do have to have some students. So we will have students that have lunch during that 12.10, 12.50 block. We've tried to rotate that so no one class gets that all the time, but that we will have some students with that. But with that said, um, kind of taking those, those 40 minute chunks broadly, they will always get a, one of those as lunch and recess, generally the first one. They will get a 40 minute live Spanish lesson. They will get a 40 minute live specials class. So, I mean, our kids have not been in the drama room or the art room or the music room all year and they get to go see those teachers. Um, and they will have an additional 40 minute homeroom block. Uh, so we're really excited about the options that this provides. For kids that are not there in person, for the, the students that are remote only, whether they've been remote only or your travel, you know, where people are heading overseas or, or somewhere for the summer before the end of our school year, um, there will also be the remote options for all of that. For instance, you know, every specials teacher will be teaching from 1210 to 1250. And then they'll be teaching remotely to the kids that aren't here in person during from the 1250 to the 130 spot while their while their spaces are being sanitized, right? Because we then we have a different cohort of kids coming in. So we've built in that time to clean in between those um, in between cohorts um, entering those classrooms. They will, yeah, I think that's enough on that piece. If there's any other questions, feel free. Um, and then you can see that our dismissal will be just the same. And we've already had a couple questions about this in the Q&A. Um, if we know secondary students are being dropped off at 740, our gate will, gates will continue to open at 730 and we will be staffed down there at 730. But if it's possible to drop at 740, for those of you guys um, who've been who've been driving your students for the last couple months, you've seen how it's a pretty smooth run process now. We're just, it's just going to be a long day in terms of perseverance for kids, especially younger kids. So um, th that might just help them out a little bit on the tail end. We will continue to dismiss buses and our green and red pods um, at 210 and then 215 will be our yellow and purple pods. So that's the same as right now. It's just that right now we do that, you know, at the, the tail end. And the key to making our pickup, our dismissal and our pickup work is you have to come at the right time. If we have a whole bunch of 215 cars in there at the 210 pickup, we get really backed up. So if you can really try to time that. Um, and again, we've gotten that down to a pretty smooth run machine and we thank you for that. Um, we do have a slightly different option for kindergarten parents. 
And I have emailed you and I think you've been in touch with your teachers and we continue to encourage um, questions to come directly to the teachers or to myself. Uh, but we do have that option for that 1230 dismissal with the pre-K students. We just, for some kindergartners who have not been to school for a full day yet, uh, this, this could be a lot. Um, it also could be great preparation for them for first grade. So that you know your child and um, can, can make that decision. And we're excited to be able to offer that option to kindergarten parents. Um, if they stay till 1230, given that 1130 to 1210 slot, they will have lunch and recess at ISP. Um, and again, after I sent that email, a lot of people emailed me and said, how do I make sure they get full day? There's nothing you need to do. Just like all other students, they will automatically be enrolled in all day programming starting May 31st. Um, the only, only uh, notification you would need to give to a teacher of a kindergarten student is if you wanted to, to do the shorter day option so we can coordinate that. Um, and again, as Audrey said in the beginning, that's the case across the board. If you, um, there's no enrollment if they're already enrolled. It's just for those students who will be joining us for the first time on May 31st. Um, so I think those are the big things. They get a Spanish class, a specials class, a homeroom block, and a lunch and recess. And we are really excited for them to get that increased time um, with their specials and Spanish teachers. So with that, we will hand it over to Kyle. Thanks, Joyce. I've been working on my alphabet since uh, our introduction. So thank you for the, uh, the feedback. Uh, middle school is relatively straightforward. Um, our schedule is being adjusted slightly. However, the general framework um, is the same as it has been. We'll have our first two blocks of the day uh, followed by a break. So kids will have a nice chance to go out to the, to the soccer field, to have their snack, to just take a break from the classroom. They'll have block three and then lunch and then two blocks after lunch. And so um, as Janeth mentioned early on, our lunch is gonna be in the covered tennis courts area. So it's gonna be um, great because it's covered, which in rainy season is a nice treat. It's also open air. And so um, any concerns, um, are mitigated by, by not any concerns, but a lot of concerns are mitigated by doing that. And so we'll be setting up students socially distanced out there. They'll have a chance to eat for as much of that time as they want. And so a big part of the transition to middle school is having some more choices. Uh, and so students will have 15, 20 minutes to eat all the way up to the entire um, 35 minutes. They'll also have access to our, um, our athletic fields. And so if they wanna go run around and burn up some steam before their afternoon classes, they'll certainly be able to do that. Our Friday schedule, again, is, um, is condensed like it is now, but students will go to all five of their classes. A lot of our teachers are using this for small group feedback, for check-ins, for, for kind of wrapping up the week in a really positive way, for meeting with individual students. And so it's a, it's a really important day, as well as our advisory. And so um, we have, we'll still have that opportunity to, to kind of wrap up our week um, by building some community and by having some really good authentic conversations about um, what's happening in the world. So we're very excited about that. A few very quick logistical notes. Um, as we mentioned, lunch is going to be in that covered area. We do encourage as much as possible to be really thoughtful with what lunch um, you're sending. Now that students will be on campus for the entire day, those, those healthy snacks and those, those things that are nourish their body and give them energy for the, to make it all the way through 215 is really crucial. And so if you could support us by, by doing that, that would be great. Um, the day rotation uh, and whatnot is going to remain the same as well as the classes. So whatever is listed in RenWeb, we're not changing any of that. That's all staying the exact same. It's really just the times on campus. Um, a few things, especially with the longer day that's so crucial, is we, we're asking that all students bring two masks. Um, it's hot here in the tropics, and so our masks get sweaty very often. And so especially when we're staying until 2.15, having that additional mask or two um, to be able to change into is, is super powerful and important. Also water bottles and then computer chargers. So we've had a number of students who are just making it to 1130 before their computer dies. Um, by extending the day, it's so crucial that they're prepared every single day. So those are some of the, the quick overviews from middle school. And with that in mind, I'll send it over to Eric for the high school overview. Thank you, Kyle. And for the high school, each what you should know is each section is a little different. Elementary's got its unique uh, needs. Middle school has theirs, and the high school does as well. And 
So first thing you need to know is that our bell schedule will return to what we generally use as a bell schedule in a normal year, where we'll run two blocks, have a short break, run two blocks, have our lunch break, and then run the last block. The only difference is in a normal year, we would have 70 minute classes. We're only having 60 minute classes because again, the online um, the research would show, support a 60 minute class as opposed to the 70 minute class. So um, that helps with the start time and the stop time, et cetera. So uh, pretty much a normal schedule. A lot of kids will be used to that. That'll be fairly easy. Again, unique to the high school, we only have one Friday. Uh, where the other sections will have a couple Fridays. We have one Friday, which is June 4th. We're in a rotation right now where kids have been going to two classes on Fridays, uh, full length classes. They'll go to J and K block that will end our rotation. And it ends our rotation right before we start final exams. So we're staying with that rotation. So we'll have advisory, we'll have the two blocks. And then on the fourth, we are gonna do the grades nine through 11 student awards. And, and the students will be done at 11.30 on the 4th. We start final exams June 9th for the grade 11 students. And because we start on June 9th for the grade 11 students, uh, there's really only seven days for grade 11 students to be on campus before they start exams. The grade nine and 10 students will start exams on the 10th of June, one day later. And so there's, a total of uh, eight days for them to be on campus. And the exams, there's two exam windows. One is eight to 10.30, one is 11.30 to two. Kids are able to take the exams at home, virtually, like we did first semester. Uh, the kids who are in the in-school support program could choose to stay at home and take their exams if they want to or they can still come to class and be in the classroom and take their exam. So it, it, it's really up to the, the student. They have that choice. If they feel the support is good, they like coming to classes, they like coming on campus, I would encourage them to stay on campus for their exams because they, they've kind of gotten used to that. The kids who are at home and have been studying at home, it's probably easier for them just to stay at home because they've gotten used to that. So it's, it's the student's choice on that. The Friday, June 11th, there is no um, PM exam on campus. You need to understand that the other sections will run later uh, or will we'll have their buses go home at 1130, just like us, but we just, we can't accommodate kids staying on campus because we have PD for teachers on that Friday the 11th. So all exams on Friday the 11th in the afternoon will have to be at home. Now, to just reiterate what Kyle said a little bit, uh, please be careful on what the kids bring. Uh, they're not gonna have access to microwaves and, and things like that. So they really need to bring cold lunches. They can still bring healthy cold lunches. Uh, they are gonna eat on the tennis courts. We have staggered the schedule. The middle school is gonna do lunch earlier. We're gonna do lunch later, like we have done in a normal year so that we can uh, keep the kids socially distanced and safe during that time. And then I would also uh, remind kids to bring their chargers. We do have electricity in the classrooms. We have extension cords, kids can plug in, but we just, it's gonna be a longer day and that's gonna create some unique issues for some kids. So just be aware of some of those uh, things and think through those. All right, that's all for the high school. So to wrap this up before we go into Q&A, just, just want to make a, a few more points. Um, first, I, I do want to point out, um, we neglected to note the 17th. The 17th is the last day of school. That will be the Tuesday, Thursday group. And that day is a half day. So for that group, you will have one other half day. Um, however, um, I think it balances well because the other times, the Monday, Wednesday, parents have had their days shortened. So I think at least it, it balances out in the end. Um, so looking at the future, what is the future gonna look like? Well, one of the reasons we wanted to also try this is because we, it gives us a chance to feel, to learn from the kinks and see what it's like and what's working and what's not working now before we start off in the fall. So this will give us some, some ideas. 
the um, the law says that that this that now that we're open, this hybrid approach, this is in effect until December 2021. So if we strictly go on that, it looks like we'll be doing the same process in the fall of kids one day and then kids the next day. And the reason why we can't have them at the same time is the the distancing. We can't fit all of the kids at school at the same time and and honor the the laws requirement to keep them one and a half to two meters apart. So the minute that changes and the CDC has now come out saying that we do not need to keep them that far apart, one meter is appropriate. So if the if Minsa and Maduka adopt that one meter um, concept, then we can get everybody back to school. But regardless, we will continue to need to offer both an on-school option. And for those that choose not to come to school, we still will need to provide an online opportunity for those students. Um, we, we have been used as a model with, with um, the with Maduka and Mensa both. They've taken pictures of our work and shared it with schools and leaders across Panama, showing what best practices look like in, in keeping kids safe and still teaching at the same time. And so I'm hoping between that and the fact that our teachers are all vaccinated and now I've learned that over 25% of our high school students are vaccinated, like maybe they'll continue to let us step forward and we're going to be ready i promise you to be flexible and to get the children back to quote unquote normal um, as soon as we possibly can we just finished a strategic plan and have um, forwarded this along to the board who will be um, deciding on whether or not to adopt it but i can assure you that the plan includes rigorous academics and taking care of our kids' mental health, social, uh, social and emotional health, and their um, leadership skills, and their character, character building, and all the things that are really important. So our education will continue to grow and be amazing. But um, we're going to survey you before the end of the year just to get your feedback because we've learned a lot from COVID. There are some good things that have come out and we we have learned that there are times where the students actually are really enjoying the asynchronous part. And so to that end, if we are doing the A day, B day thing, we could it could look something like um, we have a heavy um, in-person learning in class and and with all kinds of discussions and, and various things. And then on the day they stay home, um, really using a blended learning approach where they're still working online and offline, but you would see more of an asynchronous approach conceivably. And then we could not have the kids on computers all the time. If we have a small group that want to stay home, we could we could develop a different program exclusively for them. So that allows us to drop some of the technology and just use it where it's appropriate, not as a, a vehicle into the classroom. So we have a lot of really good ideas, but we have to continue to be flexible. And I cannot tell you exactly what August may look like because there's just too many variables um, out there. Um, let me just see if I said everything I want to tell you. Um, Yep, so that, that's basically it in a nutshell. So we'll continue to communicate with you over the summer. We will, um, again, seek your feedback on this year as a whole and, and your recommendations going forward as well. And with that, it's time for Q&A and we can close the presentation, Bill. I'll, um, I'll try to facilitate this. We, we... We have a few questions from the secondary, so I don't know if Mr. Um, Monson or Mr. Martin wants to take this or Dr. Menard. A couple of questions with the theme around um, families were not strongly encouraged to send those secondary students when we initially opened up. Um, is that messaging changing? Um, are we hoping for big increases in secondary attendance? So I don't know who wants to take that question. I'll just speak for the high school and say that my messaging is not changing. I think families need to decide what is safest for them, what's in the best interest of their child. Again, if their child is 
being successful at, at home right now online, then there's no reason for us to force them back into the campus. If they feel like it would benefit their child, then please do get the pledge signed in a timely fashion and send your child to the campus. So it can go either way, but uh, I think the families and the students are more well-informed to make that decision at this point. And, and I would also add to that that, you know, some of the kids have said to me that they aren't here. They, they, chose, they don't come to school because the, it just doesn't feel the same socially. They, they really want to hang out with their friends. And there really isn't a lot of hanging out opportunities because of the social distancing, but absolutely the kids are welcome to attend. So if there's any impression that they're not wanted, that is not the case. We, we do want the students, but we do want them to um, you know, be able to decide because it isn't a requirement to come to school, but you are welcome. Kyle, what would you add? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It's a family by family decision. Um, we've gotten a lot of really positive feedback from the kids who have come to campus and had that, those opportunities to see classmates, even if it's behind a mask from two meters away. There's been a lot of um, really positive feedback, I think, from kids. And so it's completely your decision about what you think your child will need in this situation. Um, and if you want to help talk through that process, need some ideas about your specific situation, just reach out to any of us and we'll happily talk through it. Perfect, thank you all. Now we'll move to elementary and pre-K. And so we have a number of people asking who have multiple siblings. So perhaps there's one, children, one child in pre-K and then there's an older sibling in the elementary school or perhaps even in middle or high school. And so there is a logistical challenge now on, on transportation. Um, if you do not use the buses of how to get children home uh, with one leaving at 12.30 and another leaving at 2.15. Um, so there's a couple of people asking, is this something we can reconsider or do we have any options for this? And before I move over to, to Ms. Joyce or uh, Ms. Alida, I will preface it by saying that we, we designed a family-friendly reopening plan. And by doing the alpha split, that really was to try and support families as best as we could. And it's quite different to what many schools are doing around the world, where many schools have, have students attending school based on their grade level, which is a very difficult logistics for families. So we do understand this is a challenge. Um, and with that, I'll pass over to Ms. Joyce or Ms. Alida for you to add anything about the pre-K children with siblings. I can take it. Um, that was one of the things that had me uh, you know, concern. And that's why we did a lot of um, studies and a lot of thought of, of the 1230 option. But our concern is always the well being of our students and their social emotional well being. And so we truly feel that having them go home at 1230 is the best option. It will be the same thing as if they were in PK3. Uh, in previous years where um, the PK3 students left at 12.30 and the siblings left at 2.15 to 32. So as I said, you know, um, we truly feel um, that we wanted to find a solution for families, but we needed to think of the well-being of our students. So thank you for understanding. Thank you both. Um, yeah. Sorry, Joyce. I'll just, Sorry. I'll just add to that real quickly. Um, that yeah, that Alita was really thoughtful in this process. If we have real specific um, scenarios, please just email me, and and we will see what we can do to work with the families. I'm reluctant to um, have kids miss out on these fantastic opportunities that we're able to offer them um, in the afternoon. But but at least touch base with me and, and let's work with the teacher and, and we'll see how we can support. Um, we, we don't want them missing these afternoon opportunities and that drive home would certainly interfere with it. Um, but we also recognize the complexities of these different things. So just be in touch. Thank you. The next question is also, I think for Ms. Alida, it's related to the pre-K schedule. Um, why not include Spanish class in the schedule on campus? Children often return home very tired 
and it can be a titanic labor connecting them in the afternoon. Not my words, those are the words in the question. <laughs> yes, that was um, another big consideration that we have, but we truly feel that through that extra hour, we want to push the use of English um, at school to have them ready to go to kinder with a stronger English language. So we want to continue doing the immersion program throughout the day as we did before. Um, and the Spanish teachers are thinking of new ways to entice the kids to join the classes. Uh, they're also planning uh, new activities, how to merge a few groups to have more uh, interaction among friends and students to see if that makes them uh, or helps them join the program. Thank you. Thank you. This is this next one's a bit of a tough one. Maybe Dr. Menard, you want to take this one? Um, in the future, the Pfizer vaccine will be available for younger children. Um, will this be a factor in decision making for a full return to school? You kind of touched on this one earlier, I believe, as well. Yes. I mean, I, uh, we're kind of hoping that we're hoping that, you know, with all the faculty and staff vaccinated and then a large percentage of the kids that perhaps the Mensa and Maduka will update some of their parameters, but right now we have to follow the law. We are we are bound by that, and so we cannot make that decision. But we're trying to do everything we can to make it as favorable as possible to again get our children back on campus as quickly as we can. So between the distancing and the vaccines, my fingers are crossed. But I have to follow the law. But I'll be right there, ready to push the envelope wherever I can. Thank you. We just have a couple more questions now. Um, you should be seeing typed responses if you if you put a question in and we've not spoken about it. You should see typed responses down at the bottom there. Um, but we still have a couple more to address. One of them is related to um, ASAs. Do you think that ASAs, team sports, musicals, etc., can resume uh, normally in August? So I can try and attempt to answer that as our athletics and activities director. We are planning um, once we have full days and once we're back in August um, to have an after school program that happens immediately after classes. So that might mean it's offered on different days of the week so that students in different alpha splits still have access to those activities. Those are some of the challenges we're encountering right now, but we are planning for that and we are hopeful. Um, and I think that's about all we can say at this stage because who knows, um, where we'll be in August. Do you want to add to that, Dr. Menard? Yes, please. I can also say in working with the VAPA department as far as um, shows and, and various things, we do believe we're, we're pushing major productions in the calendar to the second half of the year in the hopes that we will be able to have those events. And, and I know in the past they've traditionally been in the fall. So we're just moving the shows to the second semester so we can really make them happen. We're, we're very optimistic and hopeful and, and we're gonna, again, do as much as we possibly can. Even for the instruments, we're ordering special equipment for the different wind instruments so that they can play. So we're gonna get back to quote unquote normal as fast as we can. Thank you. Um, I think this one, Dr. Menard, might be for you as well, related to um, summer school. Are there any plans for having any kind of summer camp or summer program during the break? Yes, this is something that we have considered and we've talked about. Um, however, we're not gonna be able to offer that this summer, even though it sounds wonderful. We have a really late start this year. And so um, a late start and the next year we're starting at the normal times. So we have a really short summer and our faculty and staff are exhausted and they really would love to take advantage of their, their little break before we start next year. And so there just isn't any interest in um, doing extra work over that time. So without having the staffing, it would be really difficult to offer summer camps. The other piece is, 
in the past when we have done summer camps, and that's really what we've done in the past, but but some academic work too, it, we really start planning that in the fall of the previous year. So we have time to advertise it, we have time to get people hired, and we get it enrolled by a certain time so that we know it'll run. And at this point, when we first considered this a couple months back, there's just, we don't have the run time either to, to put it together, advertise it. So it is something that we'll look to for the following summer, but for this summer, um, we will not be able to offer any summer school. Thank you. We have a question here about vaccines. Um, I don't know if Janet, perhaps you would like to take this one. Um, as more and more students begin to get vaccinated themselves, will we be requiring, re requiring students to carry their health cards with them? Thanks, Matt. Um, good question. So we follow uh, the guidelines from Mr. Maduka at this point. They have not asked for the school to request that the students carry their vaccine card or form. But once we have more information from Maduka and Minta, we will let you know. Thank you. It's good to be thinking ahead to that, isn't it? Considering where we were a few months ago. I think there's one last question in here, um, perhaps for Dr. Menard. Once Maduka allows one meter distancing following CDC, I understand we will not need the two day cohorts. Would this mean that students are required to attend the in person or would there still be some choice? I also understand it's hard to predict so far ahead. Do you want to attempt to answer that one, Dr. Menard? Absolutely. As long as um, you know the, the government says that that we we cannot require students to come to school, we will continue to have an online option. At the same time, we are considering this as a possibility for the future. And you know, we we could even have students attending our school conceivably from anywhere in the world if we did develop a purely. Um, online version. So, so that is is really hard to answer, but we're thinking about it and we've got a lot of different ideas in that vein, but we will um, continue to take care of the students um, and have that fully online option as long as that is part of the regulations before we can go back to school. And then conceivably, once those regulations go away, then I, we will definitely consider a way to make that a possibility going forward is, is just an option. Um, but we're not prepared to say at this moment that that will happen. So thank you. Very, very good forward thinking question. And I think we don't have any more open questions. So we're, we're one minute ahead of schedule, which is nice. Dr. Menard, do you have any closing words for us? Um, I just want to thank everybody for their attendance. If, if you uh, missed a question or, or came in late, we will put this in the Dolphin Dispatch for tomorrow. Um, thanks for being excited about a new full day opportunity. And please know all of your children are welcome. We would love to see them. And it's just been a joy having students back on campus. So take care. And don't forget to register if you aren't already on campus by um, May 25th. Thank you.